Hello, it is, it is I, Christina, back for some more good times in Palia. Good to see you again, Spring Bean. This place is already starting to look different. Oh, okay. I figured you'd still be working on setting up that tent. That's some work ethic. Um, work ethic's my middle name. Eh, not much else to do around here. True. Um, I like making the place feel homey. There wasn't one for I wanted the XP. I'm going to go with that. Just the right answer. I'm sure you're going to fit in here just fine. Well, I would like a house instead of just a tent. But, okay, Budrew. I bet you've been working up an appetite from all that chopping and mining. Heck yes. Well, if you've got patience, I've got the solution to your woes. Gardening. All you have to do is wait a few sun cycles and voila, dinner or breakfast. Even lunch, if the mood strikes you. That was my stupid Disney French accent. I know, I know, it doesn't sound exciting, but trust me, nothing tastes better than a carrot you've grown yourself. Okay. I'm just going to step out from the story immersion here for a moment and tell you I have grown carrots for myself. I don't like carrots, and they don't taste any more appealing if I've grown them myself. Now I will say peas fresh from the pod that you've grown yourself. Those are pretty awesome. There's plenty of things that taste better than carrots that I've grown myself, dude. I've got all the cool tools you need right here. Go on, why don't you drop this plot down and give it a good till? He just said, call me an orange, because I'll see you around. That, wow. Gardening, make sure your garden plot is on your action bar and select it by pressing the number for the action bar slot. Aim where the garden plot should be placed and press left mouse to make the final placement. Next, once your plot is down, press and hold R and select the hoe from the tool wheel. Till the ground with the hoe by pressing and holding the left mouse button. Place seeds on your action bar and select them with the corresponding, excuse me, number key. Press left mouse again to enter placement mode. Press left mouse again while aiming at the plot you want to sow. Crops need to be watered each day. The water drop indicator lets you know when they're thirsty. Many crops can only be harvested once, and so the cycle begins again. When crops are ready to be harvested, simply press F to harvest it. Okay, so I've done gardening like this in a lot of different games. Um, first in Wizard 101, and I, uh, gardening is a huge component of Don't Starve. Um, villagers and heroes world of warcraft even tried to do like their own farmville thing 10 or 12 years ago uh with mists of pandaria so i i will have a lot of thoughts on this i'm just gonna see if there's anything in my mailbox no <laughs> sorry open can I, maybe i could have a shipment go out like maybe I'm going to sell some of my wood because it seems like it's pretty plentiful. Okay. So maybe now I'm going to, I'm going to sell a butterfly too because I, I need some, I need some gold, man. Okay. So let's see if they'll take that. Or maybe because nobody ordered it, I can't get rid of it. I don't know. Um. Oop, oop. I'm going to cut, chop some of this down. So, you know, no one told me that I should try to put stuff in there to be sold. I know that uh, is a feature of the game, let's say Garden Paws, um, that uh, a friend of mine who sadly um, we lost uh, with the COVID pandemic, she was really into this game called Garden Paws. And I know that you had, to, you know, like you put things in a, in a little container every day and or twice a day and it would, you know, take it away and give you money. For, but I also know that it very well could that could you know mechanic could have been 
uh, lifted from or inspired by Animal Crossing. Because I know Animal Crossing is a huge game and it has a lot to do with people visiting each other and, and placing orders and buying things. I think, to be honest, I think even I have chopped down and looted 30 trees. Heck yeah. Sorry about that, Audubon Society, but I am winning. Um, my foraging is now level two. Excellent. Um, I think that Lost Ark might have that kind of component where you can provide resources to other players. I, I think actually it's more that they can come to your plot and harvest, you know, they're allowed to once your plot gets to a certain level. I think it'd be really cool if, if different, like if Wizard 101 would let you do that and stuff like that. But all of that that include that increases players interacting with each other, even if you don't know each other outside the game, I think it's pretty cool. It is really fun in those games to feel like other people have seen your housing, your housing plots and stuff like that, and the work you've put into um, decorating them. just going to go ahead and clear the rest of this plot. Now, well, that was dumb. Okay. So there's a, a something I like a lot about Guild Wars 2 is that everyone can gather certain basic open world resources like mining, uh, nodes for precious metals and um, trees. Um, even if you get to it first, you know, anybody who wants to can just run up and get it and it'll spout again a few minutes later. There's not like competition where you're like, you know, doing something to try to slow the other person down or just praying that your internet connection is faster and you can get that mithril before they do. It's there for everyone. It didn't used to be that. Um, World of Warcraft implemented that, I want to say starting maybe with Shadowlands. It's pretty recent. Um, or, or BFA. That's something that I like. I have a feeling I'm not going to be able to cut down that tree. I'm going to need a better, I'm going to need a better implement for that. But let's see if I can put this plot down here. Wait. Okay. So I'm going to push the Q button and... And then I'm going to, okay, so I, uh, no. Okay, so now, oh, look, I think I found something. Uh, and that really feels like I found something. Like, that looks like a vase or something, right? Wow, I'm not, I don't think I'm very good at this part. Maybe I'm not like. Okay, so I sort of assumed that these uh, gardening plots would be um, yeah, how do I pick that up? Hmm. No, I don't want to do that. Sorry. How do I pick up that cool thing I found? I assume that these plots would be programmed into, into grids as well. And, uh, you know, it's really cute, this animation and everything. I do like it. You know what other game? How can I have forgotten? Lotro was my first game where you could, like, have crops of vegetables and stuff. That is a very fun game uh, for farming for agriculture and because also you can um, grow tobacco 
and like you can go tobacco that when when it's smoked um comes out in different shapes like a, a flower or a dragon um okay so i think i pretty much think it's safe to say that i did this part wrong but let's see whoops okay quest no okay if i push control oh pick up soil i don't want to do that though oh that was weird i didn't really mean to do that Okay, so can I Okay. Well, okay, I bunged all of that up. And that that's okay. I, I'm not gonna What is number five? Hold on a sec. I'm going to look in my inventory. Soil, place it in your yard. Soil, place it in your yard. Okay. Well, then I was doing it right. Surprise, surprise. All right, so I did all the things of, Q. whoops, that's not what I want. Okay, whoop, here are my quests. All right, well, not doing so great. Select the hoe from the tool wheel and use it on your gardening plot to till the soil, which I feel like I've done that a few times now. Am I use? is this the hoe? Right, that's the hoe, right? Yeah, of course it is. Well, makeshift hoe, there we go. <laughs> Sorry. I think there's a little footprints on uh, on the soil, which is really kind of adorable. Okay, so whatever tutorial they gave me on uh, tilling the soil was inadequate. 
And I mean, don't get me wrong, it's way more of the tutorial than you get from some games. Like, uh, don't starve. I mean, you really just have to figure it all out yourself. But, you know, that being said, if they're going to give a tutorial, like if you have to do it at least five or six times or you have to do the whole plot within 30 seconds or whatever, it, it really should be m more clearly stated. Because I don't, you know, I just, I don't know what else I could be doing to get credit for this quest. Okay, T all right, I till the soil. Now what do I do to pick up that? Here we go, I'm pick up my phone. So I think there should be a tooltip or something that tells me what to do when you found, find a vase in the soil. Like how do you pick it up? So on my phone, I'm looking up Pelia, found vase when tilling soil. How to get clay. Occasionally you can find clay in old vases while tilling land at your home plot. However, this is not guaranteed. Okay, great. How do I pick up the vase? So, I mean, I should just be able to push F and pick it up. All right, so now I'm going to ask the server. So I'm saying I found a vase when tilling my soil, but I can't figure out how to collect it. The F doesn't show up. Thank you, Juliet. All right, nice.
So I, I'm not crazy about this. Um, that, you know, like taking all these times, there's no sort of like meter across the bottom that shows you how close you're getting to having successfully tilled. Um, and as for the quest itself, you know, I had to create one square. That's all. Um, but I was given two garden plots and, um, you know, it, I feel like the quest could have been more clear. Okay, there's my first rare forage. Like, I think all of this is really, really cool. I just think that it could be explained and articulated better. I think there's going to be a lot of parents who are willing to let their kids play this game because it's not combat oriented. Um, I mean, and I will say, as always, I hope that they're super careful about who they let their kids play with and stuff like that. But, you know, this is, I mean, maybe this won't be frustrating for a young kid. Maybe they'll know it intuitively, but I feel like this could have better instructions um, for how to get certainly this part done. Okay. So part of me was just wanted to like till all of this. Um, but now part of me feels like maybe I should just go ahead and um, uh, when I get more food, go ahead and till the rest, so, you know, so I can have focus. Okay, I'm going to put this away. Craft items. I need to craft a camp player. All right, so here's a campfire. Don't want to put it too close to my tent because it'll catch on fire or too close to my um, uh, garden, right? Because that, that could also catch on fire, I think. Yeah, that's cute. All right, Badu, Badru. Seeds don't plant and water themselves. What? I'm going to need some of these bad boys. Consider them a housewarming gift. Thank you. Once your seeds are in the ground, go to that pond and fill up this here watering can and give that dirt a nice little bath. It might take a few sun cycles and a few buckets of water, but trust me, it'll be worth the wait. Some things you plant might have an effect on the seeds around it. This was something from Wizard 101 when they did introduce it that I just loved. You know, that they actually, you know... It, it happens in real life. You can't plant certain things too close to each other. One will crowd out the other for sun or one will attract a certain type of pest, uh, you know, and, and make everything else around it wither. Um, so I like, excuse me, that they did that in Wizard 101 and I like that they're doing it in this game. Some things you plant might have an effect on the seeds around it. For example, carrots and onions keep weeds from growing next to them. If you find yourself needing more seeds, you can pick them up at Zeki's. Well, I can't wait to see you again, neighbor. No, why? That would have been funny if I'd given you wheat seeds. Yeah, jerk face. Hmm, I gotta work on my material. I would say absolutely. Okay. No, I, no, I never said I wanted to pick up the log cabin fence put that yeah hi oh look all my stuff is in there because nobody ordered it that's fine it's fine i'll take it back i don't mind you know what i didn't want you guys to have my sapwood anyway losers or my plant fiber or my common blue butterfly bait me no massages. So is this also just a bunch of junk? Oh, man. It's 
looks kind of trashy. Oh, I got some mail. Who gave me mail? Gina. Dear Tinky, I've been doing a lot of digging on the flow battery you found. Humans used to use these things to power all sorts of things. You know, there's this old door under the waterfall that I've been trying to open. It's just a little ways past the shrine we first met at. I've tried all sorts of things to get it open. Maybe this battery could be the key. Why don't you give it a try? This place used to belong to your, your people, after all. You really should be the first one to check it out. Okay. Wait, did I take... Wait. Ugh. Oh no, it looks like my inventory is full. Extra items are stored in overflow for a limited amount of time to help you manage your inventory safely. Eventually, items in overflow are destroyed or replaced by new ones. Treat a full inventory seriously. Understood. Okay, I'm going to mark that as red. Now, before I... All right, so I can see, as I'm filling the bar, I can see, I can keep, I don't know, 400 of each item or 400 total. All right, 400, well, yeah. Ah, no, I have 55 wood. Oh, son of a bee sting. There we go. Maybe some things just don't count towards my, um, my cap. Duh, it's hard to know. So I don't know if it's items a slot, item slots, or if there's some sort of weight thing. I'm I'm just not sure. Dear Tinky, it looks like you've been improving your foraging skills. Why don't you stop by the inn later? I'll teach you how to build a sawmill that can put your supplies to use. Heck yeah. No messages here. All right. So I'm going to go. Hold on a second. Hopefully it's okay for me to. Okay. I forgot how to eat. Okay. Yeah, I know my watering can is empty. How do I... 
is this the little well that I'm supposed to be getting stuff from? Or is this the well? I liked in Villagers and Heroes they, they, how they had it. Um, uh, it was really, uh, I, I, they had a little well and you just sort of clicked your, your um, watering can on it and it filled it up. You could have like 10 or 20 buckets of water at a time. You know, but there's, there's not an interface. And I understand how he said, oh, yeah. Then you go here and you fill up your, your water bucket. That's great. What's the interface to make that happen? I'm level two at something. I'm not sure what. But I am, baby. So now I'm going to look at my quest to plant a seed, select it in your action bar, and then drag it to the gardening. To water, fill up your watering can in the pond of the right side of your housing plot. Okay. So this is the pond on the right side of my housing plot. So what do I, I just stand in here and then that, does that fill up my watering can? And how will I know? Okay, so my watering can is empty. I get that part. How do I get my watering can to be full? Aha, you right click it. The way I figured this out was just now I tried to eat some of the morel and it said you can't fulfill your uh, watering can here. All right, so I think that maybe you can only do one or two scoops at a time to now I'm going to do number five.
All right. Took me way too long to figure this out. I could just keep um, holding down this button and my, it would just keep digging at the plot. This, it just takes way too long to, to get a plot ready to um, plant. Later on, when it's a bigger plot or it's, you can, it's uh, eligible to have more sophisticated things be planted, absolutely make it take longer, but this is just like dumb, way too, it's just, at this stage of the game, it's not, it should be a lot easier and a lot faster to get um, something ready to plant in. So I don't know, um, you know, I'm not hearing a lot of vocalization out of my character. That's something else from Don't Starve, certainly, that I really liked. And it seems like this is sort of the same sim style. You're not actually saying anything. You are um, uh, there's just kind of little nonverbal cues. Well, it's verbal, but it's not actually words, you know. Um, I think there should be something along those lines that you know, shows that you've had success at something or, you know, just for example, when, when Willow, uh, um, there's a character named Willow and Don't Starve, I'm quite fond of her. And when she goes to uh, check on a plant that isn't ready to harvest yet, you know, she, it, she'll make a little, it makes a little flute noise. All of her so-called vocalizations are a little flute noise. For some of the uh, player characters in Don't Starve, it's, um, you know, a, a trombone or you know different different instruments but it'll say you know it'll be a cute little flute noise and then she'll say something like grow faster you dumb plant um and and then that's how you know uh you know she's sort of that's how you know okay this plant is not ready to harvest yet um or it might be getting closer to harvest you know but it's not there yet and it says something she you knows her character is, is very impatient she's definitely inspired by wednesday adams um, so, you know, grow faster, you stupid plant. I'm hungry. I want to eat you. That sort of thing. I, I think something like this, you know, some sort of, like right now I'm going to examine the plant and, oh, look, um, it's telling me what it needs, but there's nothing audio. There's no audio to hint to me that these things are needed. Okay. So it needs weed prevention. How can I... So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to eat all of the morale. How do I do weed prevention? Oh, I think maybe it's just providing weed prevention for each other. Not necessarily that it needs a weed thing done. You know, or that it needs something done to um, stop it from getting weeds. He had mentioned that they keep weeds from getting on each other, so. All right. There's some wood. I wish that we could use the middle mouse button to click between the tools in the wheel. Oh, cool. I was able to pick that up. Okay. All right, left click moves one item, right click moves the entire stack. That toggle would close it now. And he gives you eight seeds 
um, and there are nine units in the plot. Not a big deal. I'm not going to get myself, you know, we want you to have an even number of onions and carrots. I'm not going to criticize that. Okay. Talk to Kenley. Oh, no. Cook the mushrooms. Oh, wait a second. I put the mushrooms away. My bad. It said it had alchemical, alchemical uses, and I didn't really think I wanted to be eating um, mushrooms if it's all the same. Kids, like in general, if you, you know, if anybody that you don't know well offers you a mushroom, don't, don't take it. Especially if you've just gotten sucked through a portal to a new, new land. Well, uh, definitely do not take the mushroom from a stranger if you just got there through a portal. So I'm pretty sure I had a lot of these mushrooms and then I just... I ate them, but maybe it wasn't the right kind of mushroom. I don't know if you can mix and match mushroom types, but you saw I was just going around eating all the mushrooms raw. The thing that I told you not to do, but I'm old, so, um, you know, if I eat a bad shroom, it won't be much of a loss. One of you, one of you folks watching out there maybe will cure cancer someday or something, so it's very important that you not eat sh mushrooms from a strange land. All right. I'm looking for mushrooms. Nothing really looks like a mushroom. Although he might have told me where to find some. Um, right now we thought a morel was a type of mushroom. But I'm not going to, you know, fault the game for not knowing that. All right, let's see. Let's see if I've got stuff I can grill. Yay, I have three. Yay. <gasps> Damn it. Grilled mushrooms. Yay. Eat a grilled mushroom to gain focus. I cook three because it's number three on my hot bar. Uh, <laughs> and I right clicked it. I got 75 focus. Heck yeah. Cooking 101. Use 50 focus. Okay. Well, how do I do that? Do I maybe do that by chopping down this stuff? And is my house someplace other than near my plot of land? Okay, so I chopped something down and I picked it up and that got me one focus. So if you're watching this, you're saying, I cannot believe this woman has ever played a video game before in her life. How can she be so dumb? How can these things not be intuitive to her? But I have to say that I think video game tutorials and uh, user guides should be written as though someone is picking that up and playing, it, playing a, a video game, any video game, for the very first time. Because... You don't know some, they, you just don't know somebody's skill level. You don't know their literacy level. You, you don't know, you know, are they, um, how familiar are they with common video game lingo, ideograms, alphabet soup? So 
you know, a developer could say, well, this is for somebody that's already played video games. You know, this is for somebody who already has a, a level of comfort playing video games. I mean, and that's fine, but how great would it be if, if your game was friendly even to people who've never played video games before? Uh, that was one thing I liked a lot about Wizard 101. I hadn't, that was the first, you know, real video game I had played. I played stuff like Pac-Man before, but I was 39 years old and I was just trying to keep up with my son who really liked this game. And I was just trying to make sure it wasn't going to be too frustrating for him. He was in the third grade when he started playing. Was it going to be too frustrating for him or was the chat uh, actually uh, constructed safely, that sort of thing. So I, I had to play the game myself and it, it was pretty easy. Uh, I think it should start off being relatively easy. I mean, I guess if you want to have like a super elite game that only elite players can play, that's fine too. But a game like this, that's going to be free to play and rely a lot on sort of goodwill from players to Oh yeah, I really like this game. I'm really glad it's. I'm really glad it's out. I'm going to spend a little bit of money in the cash shop to make sure that it keeps going. I think you've got to make it extremely user friendly. Like I have a, a friend who loves to play Sims, and I'm going to tell her about this game because I think she'll like it a lot because there's not a lot of combat. But I'm not really sure how it's going to go. Um, she has played other video games. Don't get me wrong. But I, I think this could be a little more user friendly for somebody that is not really an advanced gamer. Because you're going to get people who aren't advanced gamers playing free to play games. That's just the way it is. Let's see, when I go to the table and craft something, do I use focus then? Or am I going to have to earn all this focus by chopping stuff, which is fine. It's fine if that is the case. So these are the things that I know how to make. Hold on. Right now I've used 28 focus. So let's see if I make a makeshift arrow. Okay, that did not use any focus, which is fine. Um, it I have to go out and get this other 50 focus uh, tally by chopping stuff or harvesting. So maybe I should go talk to somebody about having a better axe or whatever but I kind of don't feel like going to town right now so I'm just gonna right quick finish up my the harvesting I need to do for this cooking 101 with the tools that I have without going back to town no 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 so you have to pick up the item in order for it to count as having as focus um so this, um, watch, this won't go to 31. And, yeah, now it went to 32. But that's part of inventory management, right? Is you have to, oh, I just used a hoe to do all that. Ha, ah, how silly. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, so that's inventory management. You know, it's not, you can't just chop the stuff down and leave it there in order to, 
complete this quest. You have to also pick it up for the focus to be expended, which means y you have to practice inventory management to get, you know, to get the quest done. And you've already seen my inventory been filled up once. I have my, um, my chest is already at 400 units. So my chest is already full. Sorry, you need to upgrade your tool. Okay, yeah, to do that, bigger tree, I'm gonna need a better tool. That's fine, I don't mind. Right, in Minecraft, you can't, uh, you can't mine certain nodes with a low level um, pickaxe. And in Guild Wars 2, if you try to mine a high level node with a low level axe, you just get ruined scraps and you know, you've basically, you've ruined the node. You've wasted your time and you've wasted the opportunity to get a, a good piece of metal from it. It's not the end of the world, it, it respawns. But you know, there's no point in going to an area with mining that's way over your current level, you're not gonna level up your mining um, in a high level area, you, you, you gotta progress through. Um, say if you're, you're leveling a human in Guild Wars 2, you've gotta go through uh, Queensdale or Queensland or whatever. Um, you can't just go to Maguma and start harvesting there. You will get a bunch of bupkis. Six more, yay. So now I can return to Reth. I do have a piece of mail. I'm gonna check that. What I'm actually gonna do is bring this little um, chapter of my starting journey to a close. And we will pick back up with me returning to town, talking to Reth and about cooking and talking to Kanali about getting a house. Thank you so much for being part of my journey. <laughs>